Meanwhile, two Australians detained in Iran have been identified as travel blogging couple reportedly arrested for flying a drone. Let's go live to Emily Evans. Emily, the couple is from Perth. That's right. Jolie King and Mark Firkin had been travelling around Australia, Asia and parts of the Middle East over the last two years. But the Perth couple were reportedly arrested 10 weeks ago for flying a drone without a licence in Iran. The pair are currently being held in prison in the country's capital. We heard from the Foreign Affairs Minister earlier today. She said the Australian government has been pressing the Iranian government to release these this couple. She also said that she had been, uh, she had met her Iranian counterpart as recently as last week. But the minister did confirm that these arrests were not politically motivated. I continue to believe that the best chance of a successful outcome for these three Australians is with Iran through diplomatic channels and not through the media. I can say these arrests do not relate to broader <laughs> issues. We have no reason to think that these arrests are connected to international concern over Iran's nuclear program, United Nations sanctions or sanctions enforcement, or maritime security and the safety of civilian shipping. The Department of Foreign Affairs has confirmed it is providing consular assistance for the families of this couple who in a statement earlier today said they hope to see Mark and Jolie safely home as soon as possible. The Prime Minister has also confirmed that Australian officials have been involved in this issue for some time, but he did say that the case is sensitive. These are always very sensitive cases and they're, they're never issues that are, that are, that are addressed well. Uh, by offering public commentary on them. And I note that in, a, in, in at least one of these cases, that's a view that's been expressed by family members. So we will continue to pursue these matters in the interests of the Australians who are at the centre of these cases, and we will do that carefully, and we'll do that in close consultation uh, through our, our officials who have been part of this process now for some time. Now, the travel advice for Australians heading to Iran was updated on Tuesday. The department is asking anyone who's considering travelling to the country to seriously think about whether they need to due to that risk of foreigners, including Australians, potentially being arbitrarily detained or arrested. The department has also admitted that if that happens, uh, they cannot guarantee any consular assistance. Annalise? Emily Evans, thanks for the update. Joining us now live is Professor Armin Seikal from the Australian National University. You're an Iran expert. Can you tell us about the prison where they're being held? It's notorious in Tehran, at least, for holding political prisoners. It is uh, the Nevin uh, uh, prison. It is uh, out, uh, in the outskirts of Tehran. Uh, of course, uh, there has been uh, Human Rights Watch um, uh, reports uh, which have described it uh, or described the conditions in that prison as uh, really horrible, uh, but of course that does not mean that you're going to meet out the treatment to, to all the prisoners in the same way, and uh, when uh, there are foreigners in that prison, probably they will get uh, uh, possibly better treatment than uh, some of the uh, real political prisoners who the government is highly suspicious of. They're obviously not any kind of political prisoners, but there is a lot of tension right now between Iran and the United States and Australia also has been involved in the Strait of Hormuz. Do you think that there will be any kind of pushback from the Iranian authorities just at the fact that they are Australian and British? Well, there have been a speculation about the fact that uh, probably uh, the Iranian de detention of this couple may be linked to Australia's announcement that it's going to participate in the US-led uh, naval operations uh, to, uh, through the uh, Strait of Hormuz. Uh, but I think uh, uh, that can be only circumstantial. We really don't have any hardcore evidence to say that the two are really uh, linked at this point. And we don't have the timing of that either, but just with where things are sitting now, there's certainly going to be a very increased pressure on these prisoners and the Australian government in particular. Uh, there's no doubt about that, and uh, I'm sure that the Australian government and the British government have already engaged in... Uh, uh, the diplomatic uh, the talks uh, with the Iranian authorities. Uh, I, I think, as the Prime Minister has said, uh, that he would like to really uh, be very cautious uh, and uh, not to engage in megaphone di uh, diplomacy, but rather try to uh, s uh, uh, seek a resolution of this uh, issue uh, through qu uh, quiet diplomatic channels. 
From what you know of the Iranian justice system, what are their prospects for being released? Well, there has been a lot of great goodwill on the part of the Iranians towards Australia. And, of course, I mean, as I've been saying this uh, quite a few times, uh, that uh, Australia is one of the very few members of the Western Alliance which has uh, maintained sustained diplomatic relations with Iran uh, since the advent of the Iranian the Islamic Republic 40 years ago. And that has been at the ambassadorial level, and uh, I I Iran has, has had good working relationship with uh, uh, Australia. And, of course, our former uh, foreign minister, Julie Bishop, visited Iran in 2016, and then that uh, visit was reciprocated by Iranian foreign minister in 2017. So I think that goodwill on the part of the Iranians may well work in favor of Australia and in favor of these uh, detainees. And when it comes to their treatment there, are they likely to be treated better because they're foreigners? I think th that is very likely, uh, but uh, at the same time, it depends uh, what is the level of suspicion that they have. I mean, if they really think that they've done something incredibly nasty and they have got the evidence uh, to prove that these people were, uh, for example, involved in a spying or something like well, that. Well, they might have that, inadvertently uh, filmed something with their drone. That's highly possible, because uh, they were just uh, uh, tourists visiting Iran, and uh, they went to, to an area where they could uh, ride helicopters and perhaps uh, fly drones and so on. But the fact that it was... Uh, uh, closer to a military precinct, and they may have taken some photographs, and of course uh, that may have made the Iranian authorities quite really suspicious of them. Is there any kind of precedent for this before out of Iran, with tourists getting arrested and detained? Yes, there are quite, uh, quite a number of uh, British and uh, the Americans have been arrested uh, in the past, and most of them uh, have been of Iranian origins. For example, Iranian Americans, or for that matter, Iranian uh, uh, b b British. Uh, but at the same time, also there have been other people. For example. Uh, a scholar, research scholar from Princeton University has been detained. That's from the United States and is still in jail uh, there. And, of course, they have been charged for spying for the United States or either, for, for example, uh, for Britain. Well, our thoughts are with their family at this time. Thank you so much for your insight, Professor Armin Seikel. My pleasure.